Welcome to this short lesson on performing mole conversions. As we get into this, I want to reinforce the idea that the mole is a very important and significant unit in chemistry. However, we don't measure the mole directly in the laboratory. We don't have an instrument that measures moles. There's no such thing as a mole meter. If we want to use this unit, we're going to need to perform a calculation to convert other measurements into a mole. The first of those calculations we'll look at is in converting from particles to moles. And this term here, particles, can mean several different things. Sometimes in chemistry, we use a single element for a particle, an atom. So if we were measuring carbon, for example, those particles are called atoms. In other cases, we may be talking about combinations of atoms, such as carbon dioxide. These particles are known as molecules. And a third particle often used in chemistry would be a particle such as this one here, sodium carbonate. This particle is called a formula unit. We don't actually use the term molecule for this because it's an ionic compound, so we use the term formula unit to describe one of these particles. Let's look at how we'll convert from particles to moles. One mole is equivalent to, now remember your definition for what a mole is. Mole is equivalent to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Whatever you're counting, whether it be atoms, molecules, formula units, or any other thing, there will be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of these in a mole. In our first example, we're calculating the number of atoms in 0.5 moles of argon. What I like to do on these conversions is to write down where I'm headed first. What am I looking for? I'm looking for atoms. And then I like to write down where I'm beginning over here. This I often call the given in the problem. Once I've set up the two ends of my problem, the rest of this is fairly simple. We're going to use a technique called unit cancellation, sometimes called dimensional analysis. We're going to attempt to get the moles that are on the top of my given to cancel by placing them on the bottom of a conversion factor. On the top of that conversion factor, I'm writing the units that I'm trying to convert into, which of course is atoms. And then I set up a ratio. And that ratio will look something like this. One mole is equivalent to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So I take out my calculator and I multiply 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd times 0.5 and I get 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd. Our next example says that there are 1.2 times 10 to the 24th molecules of propane, C3H8, in a tank. How many moles is this? So in this problem, we're looking for moles. I'm going to start my problem by setting up the units for the unknown over on the right side of my problem. Then I'm going to write down the given, which is 1.2 times 10 to the 24th molecules. Now be careful when you're working with these units. You'll notice that I've been abbreviating moles, M-O-L, the common abbreviation. Be careful about abbreviating molecules, because this can be confusing. Some people think molecules and moles are the same thing, and they're very different concepts. A molecule is a single particle, while a mole is 6 times 10 to the 23rd of those particles. So oftentimes I'll just write out the word molecule so that I don't mix those two concepts up. I'm going to write that on the bottom here, molecules. And on the top I'm going to write the abbreviation for mole. And then I'm going to fill in the ratio, and as we used before, one mole is equivalent to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. This will ensure that molecules cancel and I'm left with moles. And now I perform the calculation. For this calculation, I get approximately 2 moles. In the chemistry lab, the most frequent measurement we take is using mass, which is measured in grams. And if you'd like to convert mass into moles, there's a simple conversion for that as well but you'll need your periodic table. You see the molar mass, the mass of one mole of substance, always comes off of your periodic table, and it will depend on which atoms are in that, that particular substance. In this problem here, let's look at how many 
moles are present if there's 81 grams of aluminum. Since I'm looking for moles, I'm going to write this on the right side. I want you to notice this time I'm going to add a little detail to my calculation. This is a good way to solve problems. It's a good thing to practice right now because as the problems get more complex, we're going to find many of our calculations have more than one substance in them. So I'm going to label my moles with the symbol AL for aluminum. Over on this side, I'm going to write my given, which is 81.0 grams AL for aluminum. So this conversion here looks something like this. I'm going to try to convert the grams into moles. Setting up my conversion this way allows me to cross out the grams. If they're on the top and bottom of a fraction, they cancel, leaving moles as the units for my answer. Now I just need to fill in the numbers, and here they are. The number comes from the periodic table. Notice on the periodic table, we've got element number 13, aluminum, with a molar mass that's given as 26.982. Very often in my chemistry class, I have my students round to the nearest tenths place. That means I'm going to keep the 2, the 6, and the 9, but the 9 gets rounded. And so that number that I read off the periodic table, the molar mass, which I round to 27.0, that is the number of grams for one mole of aluminum. And so I write that number on the bottom next to the grams, 27 grams. And next to the moles on the top, I'm going to write 1. This means there are 27 grams for every one mole. Now all I do is reach for my calculator and divide 81.0 by 27.0. For this problem, I get 3. Now when I write my answer, I'm going to write it with 3 significant digits, since I had 3 significant digits in my calculation. And I'll call that 3.00. Let's try another one. In this example, we're supposed to calculate the mass of 0.25 moles of sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is commonly used as a drain cleaner and also used for making soap. And the common name for that is lye. I'm trying to find the mass in this sample. So over on this side, I'm going to write down G for grams of NaOH. These are the units for my unknown. And on this side of my problem, I'm going to write 0.25 moles NaOH. Next, I put in a conversion factor with moles NaOH on the bottom, and that's so that they will cancel. And I put grams NaOH on the top. And whenever I want to find the number of grams per mole of substance, I look that up on the periodic table. For this one, I'm going to have to add up the molar mass of Na, O, and H. And I'll be rounding these numbers. Na's molar mass comes out to about 23.0. Oxygen's molar mass is 16.0. And hydrogen, I'm going to use 1.0. Notice in each of my measurements, I took my numbers to the tenths place, which is a good place to round for this chemistry class. This gives me 40.0. And again, this is the grams per mole of substance. Another way to write that is 40 next to the grams and 1 next to the moles. Now remember, you always want the molar mass to be written next to the grams because we are looking at the grams per mole or the grams for one mole. In this problem, I've got numbers on the top of my fractions. I'm going to multiply 40 times 0.25. 40 times 0.25 comes out to 10. So the answer is 10 grams, 10 grams of NaOH. The final conversion we'll do is one in which we convert the volume of a gas into moles. We do that by using this conversion factor. A mole of any gas always has a volume of 22.4 liters, assuming that it's measured at STP. Now, STP is an acronym that stands for Standard Temperature 
and pressure. So what this conversion says, if we have a mole of gas, it will occupy 22.4 liters at standard temperature. However, if you increase the temperature, as you probably realize, that volume will also increase because gases expand when the temperature goes up. And if you increase the pressure on that gas, well, the gas volume will contract. So this measurement is dependent upon the conditions, and it only works at STP. So in this example, we read, what is the volume of three moles of carbon dioxide gas if the gas is at STP? Now recall, STP just means that we're able to use that conversion factor that says one mole is equivalent to 22.4 liters. The question is to find a volume. So over here I'm going to write down liters because those are the units for volume. It also tells me that we're starting with three moles of CO2. To convert from moles to liters, we put in a conversion factor. We want the moles to go away, so we write moles on the bottom. We want to turn those into liters, so we write liters on the top. And Then we simply fill in a conversion factor, which we just learned one mole is always equivalent to 22.4 liters. When we perform this calculation, the moles cancel, and we'll get to our answer. All we need to do is multiply the two numerators, 3 times 22.4, which comes out to 67.2 liters. Let's look at another example. How many moles of air are in a 44.8 liter container, assuming that it's kept at 0 degrees Celsius and 1 atm? These numbers right here are the magic numbers that we call standard temperature and pressure. What they tell us is that we're going to use our conversion factor, one mole, is equivalent to 22.4. Now you might be wondering, what do we do if they're not at standard conditions? And we'll get to that calculation a little bit later. But for now, let's assume STP, and let's perform this calculation where we're looking for moles. We're going to start with 44.8 liters as our given. Notice in this calculation the gas we're using is actually a mixture of gases called air. And as we study gases, we'll learn that mixtures behave just like as if they were a single gas. So we're going to use the same conversion that we've been using. Since I have liters on the top, I'm going to put liters on the bottom of this conversion factor. And on the top I will put moles. And this allows me to cancel out the liters of air, leaving behind moles. Recall our conversion factor up here, one mole is equivalent to 22.4 liters. So in this problem, to get to the answer, I need to divide these two numbers. 44.8 divided by 22.4, which is 2. Notice again, I'm going to try to show this number with three significant digits, and I will write it as 2.00. Well, we've now created a strategy for converting a variety of things into moles. We learned how to convert from particles to moles using Avogadro's number, or 6 times 10 to the 23rd. We've learned how to convert from grams to moles. We do that using our periodic table and looking up molar masses. Finally, we've learned if it's a gas at STP, we can go from liters to moles using the molar volume. One mole is equivalent to 22.4 liters. So what do we do if we want to go from grams to molecules? Or if we wanted to go from liters of a gas into grams? Can we do those conversions as well? Of course we can. It is going to take an extra step though. The strategy we use is to first convert into moles and then to convert those into grams. So it'll be a two-step conversion. So let's try one of these multi-step calculations now. The question says what is the mass of 11.2 liters of carbon dioxide gas at STP. We are looking for mass, which is measured in grams. We are given liters, 11.2 liters. And so we set up a conversion like we have for all the others, where we've written down the units for the unknown over on the right side, the units for the given as a fraction over one, and now we proceed to plug in units. I know I want the liters to go away. Can I convert those into grams? Well, I can't do this directly because I don't have enough information to go from liters to grams. 
but I do know how to go from liters to moles. In this problem, they tell us the gas is at STP, which means one mole is equivalent to 22.4 liters. This gets me a little bit closer to what I'm looking for. All I need to do now is get the moles to go away and to turn those into grams. And remember, you always know the grams to moles ratio if you know the chemical formula. You look that up on the periodic table. We're talking about carbon dioxide. Carbon has a molar mass of 12.0. Oxygen has a molar mass of 16.0. Notice that I'm going to multiply that twice because there are two oxygens. And the molar mass of this compound is 44.0. The units, always grams per mole. So we'll use this molar mass. One mole is equivalent to 44.0 grams. And this will let us finish our conversion. Take out your calculator, multiply the numerators, divide by the denominator, and you get 22.0 grams. Let's try one final calculation. In this calculation, we're finding the number of molecules in a 68 gram sample of ammonia, or NH3. Since I'm looking for molecules, I'm going to write that down on the right side of my problem. Since I'm given 68 grams, I'm going to put that on the left side of my problem. Now I'm going to set up my problem, attempting to get units to cancel. I'm going to try to get rid of the grams. I do not know a gram to molecule ratio, but I can go from grams to moles. And we'll do that in the first step. From the periodic table, we find out that a mole of ammonia has a mass of 14.0 plus 3 times 1.0 which is a total of 17.0 grams per mole. I'm going to use this molar mass in my calculation. Recall it was 17.0 grams, so that number goes on the bottom next to the grams, for every one mole, 17 grams per mole. We haven't got our answer yet, but we are getting closer. We know now the number of moles. The last step of this calculation is to convert from moles into molecules. Recall again that moles are not molecules. A mole is a collection of molecules. One mole is equivalent to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. And so I grab my calculator, I multiply the numerators, I divide by the denominator, and I get 2.408 times 10 to the 24th. Now notice that when I write this number down, I'm not going to keep all of the digits because this measurement here only had two significant digits. I'm going to make sure that my answer also only has two significant digits. I would write this as 2.4 times 10 to the 24th. I hope this little lesson helps you complete all of your mole conversion problems using a strategy that's becoming very familiar to us in chemistry called unit cancellation.